Hi guys and welcome to Cultonomics. My name is Paul Hanley and today I'm going to be chatting to you about the consumption function. In this video we will look at a consumption function which shows the relationship between consumption and disposable income in the economy. Now what we have here is we have a linear relationship in our situation between consumption and disposable income. This linear relationship is upward sloping and what that tells us is that consumption and disposable income are positively related to one another. Now, if we start off down here at the left hand side, what we will say is down at the very bottom of our diagram, we have zero, which represents zero income and zero consumption in the economy. However, we know that people need to consume some amount of products and services to stay alive, to have a certain standard of living. And what we're going to say is that this is roughly 6,000. We'll say that the 6,000 is represented by the term C0, which is an intercept term, uh, mathematically speaking. So 6,000 is our starting point. We can say that, let's say we take the economy at one point in time and the consumption level is at 8,000 euro and the income level, the disposable income in this economy here is at 10,000. Now, let's just change that slightly and let's say that over time the economy changes and it goes up to let's say 16,000 euro in terms of consumption and let's say that at 16,000 euro the disposable income level is at we will say 20,000. Now what the consumption function does is it's tracing out the relationship between consumption and disposable income. So what we can do is we can look at the slope of this line which is important for us and the slope of our line is as follows it is the change in y divided by the change in x so the change in y is between 8000 and 16000 which means it is 8000 euro and the change in x is between 10 and 20000 so this is 20000 euro here and 8,000 over 10,000 euro is 0.8. So the slope of the line of our marginal propensity to consume uh, is what we actually call it. So the MPC, the slope of our line is equal to 0.8. So the slope of a consumption function represents the marginal propensity to consume in an economy. And in equation terms, what we are going to call this slope is C1. So we have an intercept term, which is C0. We have a slope term, which is C1. So if we write out the equation for the consumption function, we say that consumption in the economy is equal to an intercept term C0 plus a slope term C1, our MPC, by disposable income. And in our case, we can actually put in those figures if we so wish. The C0 is 6,000 and the slope, the marginal propensity to consume is 0.8. And we have our disposable income still in there. What we can also say about this equation is that it may change in an economy. So what may happen, for example, is if people are less confident about spending in the economy, the MPC value, the 0.8 here may decrease, for example, during a recession. If people are spending less money out of additional income, what will happen in this situation here is with a decrease in the MPC, the consumption function becomes flatter. So what that means is that people are spending less money out of additional net income. And the MPC in this case here may have dropped to maybe 0.4, which would mean that out of each extra euro a household is receiving in disposable income, they're spending 40% of it or uh, 40 euro out of 100 euro, for example, 
rather than the 80% in our example above. We can also have a second example here where the consumption function itself shifts upwards. Now this would happen where the MPC hasn't changed. People are still spending in our scenario here the exact same amount of the extra income 0.8 because we will draw it with the exact same slope. However, because people are wealthier in this economy here, what we see is the consumption function has shifted upwards. I hope you call back to Cultnomics soon. Bye for now.